Sitting with Phil Barrett, uh, VP of uh, Mobile and uh, Digital for B Street. Welcome. Thanks for uh, coming and telling us a little bit about what you're doing and, and enlightening us on some of the uh, mobile marketing initiatives and advertising. Thanks for having me. So uh, what's your pitch on, uh, on, uh, on B Street? Well, B Street is a uh, full-service, below-the-line agency. Uh, we specialize in uh, shopper marketing, uh, experiential, and then digital as an extension of all those platforms. And of course, mobile is an extension of digital. It fits really well with what's happening in shopper marketing, and of course, enhances experiential events. So everything that we do in the mobile digital space enhances uh, all the other below-the-line channels. Well, so basically, you should be focusing on, on, on the mobile side and let all the other businesses feed into that, isn't it? That... <laughs> mobile is a great amplification opportunity. Okay. So people ask me, you know, should I abandon dollars from digital or TV or, or, or retail and put it right into mobile? I say no, but you have to find new dollars or dollars from somewhere else. Maybe it's, it's sales incentives uh, to incorporate mobile into the overall marketing mix. Uh, what we're seeing now in Canada, we're at the point where uh, we have critical mass. We have uh, enough Canadians accessing the mobile web, looking for applications that, as a marketer, if you're ignoring that channel, you're ignoring a huge opportunity uh, to engage users. Where it used to be that as marketers, we would talk at people, yeah. or we'd advertise at people. Now we're having conversations, we're engaging, we're learning more about them, and we're actually building really neat loyalty platforms based on mobile. So when did that change? When did that inflection change, where, where mobile now becomes you know, a, a, an experiment into a, a must-have uh, or it must be a part of your marketing mix? It's been pretty recent. I mean, uh, I've been in this space, I've been evangelizing mobile for about five years. And five years ago, if I said mobile marketing, you would have thought a truck going up Young Street with a rotating sign, that was mobile marketing, right? <laughs> that's that's right. what it was, right? Helicopters and, then, uh, and blazing yeah, helicopters banners. And, and uh, over the C&E grounds. Uh, a couple of years ago, mobile marketing was really text to win yeah. or, or text to enter. That's what everyone yeah, thought. Yeah, short and codes. And, short uh, codes. Yeah, yeah. And then you had a bunch of um, uh, geeks peddling SMS platforms and they said, we're, we're mobile Late marketers. at night television. Exactly. Yeah. So we said, you know what? Mobile marketing is really about the mobile channel. And I think SMS is still a better peer-to-peer -peer channel than, than a, than a advertising channels. Yeah. So because of smartphones really taking off as of 2007, we're at the point now where um, you know 55% of Canadians are buying a new phone in the next six months and they're all buying smartphones. Yeah. So we suddenly have a, a mini you know, computer with us at all times and because our clients are buying them now too, it's, it's not such a big sell. Yeah. Uh, so for us, if you're we're talking to a new client, we say uh, let's, let's spend at least 10% of our budget uh, build a mobile website to start because most Canadian brands don't have the US budget to build apps across four platforms. Build a mobile website, optimize it to work across smartphones, and spend a little bit of money um, on mobile media. Yeah. And mobile media is just like your website. If, if you don't spend money on media, no one's going to really know about your mobile website. So uh, we advertise across several Canadian uh, mobile platforms, and we've been amazed at the results. I mean, uh, online, if we get 0.2% response rate, we're thrilled. Yeah. Like we're, we're doing high fives, group hugs, we're going for early drinks on Friday <laughs> so afternoon. You're, you're shutting down you the know, we're shutting down the <laughs> office, great. we're taking an extra week off, right? With, with mobile, we're getting consistently three to five times better performance. Yeah. It's not unusual to hit 2% on mobile. Yeah. Um, part of it is it's a brand new channel, so people are, are intrigued by it, they're not automatically um, trained to ignore it. Yeah. But you also have to look at the mobile screen is smaller in itself, so there's less content to compete with. Uh, there's only one ad, uh, so a user is more likely to see your ad. So as long as you do the right targeting, the right segmentation, and have the right offer, um, you're going to have really good performance. So I say for a marketer, a uh, huge opportunity to get in now, invest at least 10%. For some of our clients, as much as 20% of their digital budget is now going just towards mobile and mobile media. And, and so that's a co combination uh, of, of building the mobile, their mobile presence yep. and then driving traffic to that mobile presence. Right? Exactly. You need both. Yeah, yeah. Just like social media, just like Facebook, just like your online yep. properties, you build it, they're not going to come. Yeah. You know, unless you get lucky and someone blogs about you or you get written up in the magazine somewhere, you can't depend on that to make, make your numbers. So you need to buy media, targeted media, drive the traffic, and then once you have them, uh, engage them. Uh, get their information, and then you can have that ongoing conversation with them by opting into different channels. It's so amazing how the marketing mix, uh, well, you know, on a high level it has remained the same. Marketing, uh, you know, I was talking to a, another person about this, and the marketing, marketing art, the art of marketing hasn't changed very much, mm -hmm. right? You, 
at a macro level, but at a micro level, your marketing mix is so different today than it was five years ago and ten years ago, or even five months ago, yeah, or yesterday, really, because right? yeah. uh, of the social the social networks and 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 uh, and bringing in mobile and as a brand extension. Um, where does it where does it uh, you know how do how do companies embrace this? I mean, I'm point two percent conversion rate, or even two percent or two and a half percent conversion rate on yeah. the mobile side. Uh, I'm not. I'm not entirely convinced um, that I, I, I. It's it's a low number, right? Just yep. in general, it's yep. a low number, but it's a measurable number. But I have a deep feeling that why are we not? Why do we accept that? You know, why do we accept two percent? Why don't we do great things and get it up to eighty percent? You know what? Some people are doing it. Um, you look at Charmin. I mean, uh, toilet paper. Yeah. I mean, who would think the toilet paper would be relevant? For an app or for a mobile website, and, and some of our clients did the same thing to us. They that, said, yeah. "Who cares about bread on mobile?" Well, if you build the right utility that they need, yeah. that and, and you almost put the product secondary. Yeah. You know, create the the utility that, that, that um, enhances lifestyle, becomes a must-need application. Then you get huge engagement. Then you still need the mobile media to drive awareness of that app. But then, if the app is really great or the mobile web experience is really great you'll get that huge engaged audience you just cannot get in any other channel. So uh, doesn't the market tell you this though? That if your <laughs> click-through rates or your engagement rates are so low, you're, you're doing something wrong. Whether you're engaging with the wrong demographic, at the wrong time, and in the wrong location, or you're just, your marketing initiative just really stinks. Like uh, you, you really have that almost immediate feedback, don't you? And mm -hmm. why are people just adjusting instead of accepting? You know, fundamentally, people don't want to advertise. Yeah. So they're they're trained. And they're still against it. They're still against it. <laughs> fundamentally, right? <laughs> They'll put up with it. They yeah. have to. Yeah. And so if you're disruptive enough and you have the right message, you might get their attention. Yeah. But if you look at say the Facebook platform, they're now getting about the same amount of traffic on their mobile website as they are on the desktop side. Yeah. That's a huge engaged platform. So if I have a page on Facebook, suddenly I have a mobile Facebook page too. Yeah. So you can drive engagement across different channels, and I think there are different ways of, of getting someone's attention. And you know, uh, it's unrealistic to ever expect to get 100% of anyone's attention. But I think the numbers bear out. You know, at, at a 2% rate, you, you know, the ROI is pretty good yeah. in terms of increase in sales or, or loyalty or likelihood to recommend. Yep. Um, so, but just double that, right? Like that should be a goal. Right? That's our challenge, yeah. right? That's definitely our challenge. And that's where good uh, engagement uh, and timely, relevant engagement has to happen, and making sure that the message is the right. Yeah, and, and think of mobile, you know, in different contexts. I mean, if I'm at a concert yeah. and I'm at a U2 concert, and then we flash on the screen, download this app, and get the concert live, and you can save aspects of it, and then you can tweet about it and, yeah. and share it. People are going to be highly, highly motivated and engaged to do that. Yeah. So it can be very engaging um, in the different contexts. Yeah. Well, listen, you know what? Phil, I really appreciate you coming in. Short notice to come in and uh, talk to us about Thanks this. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, man. All right. Take Thank care. You. Thank you.